that episode, though. Perfect. Hello and welcome to Voice of the Fat Mantis. And you're watching my review of episode two of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I have to start off by saying I absolutely loved this episode. It absolutely blew the last one away. It was literally the opposite that everything the premiere episode had to offer. It brought back the comedy that the MCU is so well known for. It had an action sequence that actually bested episode one's action sequence and all the characters and acting moments were amazing even u.s agents played by wyatt russell who did an excellent job of both being likable and someone you want to punch in the face it was ultimately a tour de force i'm ultimately going to give this episode a 96. now we are heading into spoiler turf so this is your warning to get off this ride because the fat mantis is about to dish it out for you the episode starts off while we see Wyatt Russell playing John Walker, otherwise known as the U.S. agent. We actually get to see him as he returns to his old high school, and he gets to talk about the great weight that is on his shoulders being the second Captain America. It is a great and important weight to, to lift up, and actually you feel sorry for the guy. He goes through a kind of PR thing, similar to the way steve rogers went through in the original captain america the first avenger however it's a more modern day version where he's signing action figures and kissing babies and hugging senators or whatever pr people do it was fun and interesting to watch and you actually felt for this guy you actually wanted to root for him however when the episode gets into high gear, you quickly realize he is a white privileged douchebag. Now this is not to say that I'm calling all one particular group of people out, but I'm saying he's one of these very privileged, um, just everything handed to him. Silver spoon, uh, never had an excuse to fail, so therefore he's an overachiever type of guy. The type of guy you don't like. However, the episode moves on very quickly with the Winter Soldier approaching the Falcon and they quickly get into it. They basically are like, yo, bro, you want to bust up some bad guys? And they're like, let's do it. And I really appreciated that. I was worried there was going to be a slow burn. and It was going to take a while for our characters to get with each other. But that was not the case. Really enjoyed that aspect of it. They immediately get into a fight with the Flag Smashers, and that is when we are introduced to Carly Morgenthau, otherwise known in the comics as the original Flag Smasher, and she is super powered up, just like the rest of her gang of terrorists. And there is an amazing action sequence that takes place on uh, between two trucks on a highway, and it was excellently done. The trailers did a great job of hiding something that happens on it. It's not just Winter Soldier and Falcon fighting the good fight there, but actually the new Captain America and his sidekick, Battlestar, an actual comics accurate character, look him up <laughs> if you want to cringe. Battlestar, interestingly enough, his costume is not modeled off of his comic book counterpart, but actually off of another black hero. His body armor and SWAT team commando style look seems to be taken off of the black rendition of the superhero from DC Comics, Guardian. And it is an amazing fight sequence. Now, they end up seeing the huge differences. Once again, the banter between the two partners, the buddy-buddy partners, and the banter against the new Captain America is what really brings back MCU comedy, and I was very relieved to see it. Now, we come to the mic drop moment. The moment that blew me away. I didn't think they were going to go so hard in this episode, but the characters, after they leave, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, decide not to work with John Walker or Battlestar, but instead decide to go on their own investigation, which brings them down to the deep south where they go to see someone the winter soldier once knew that's right they go ham on it and they bring out isaiah bradley aka the secret black captain america that's right trying to rediscover the super soldier serum back in the 40s and 50s they began experimentation on black soldiers and only one was a success isaiah bradley and we get to see him in his old age and it was excellently realized the scene it's followed by a scene that people are going to accuse of being woke 
when Sam and Bucky are out talking on the street and the police come to bother them. And the police instantly believe that Sam, who is a military veteran, a hero, a professional individual, and an Avenger, freedom fighter, is accused of essentially this accusation simply because he's black that he is the troublemaker in the incident. And there's just two friends talking, two friends having a heated conversation. It was very modern and it did have a message in it. And I hope that people aren't bothered by it. And they're gonna write it off as something that's too woke. It's something that's very real and I'm glad that it was addressed within there. So our characters end up getting into the police precinct and there's a whole thing where Captain America comes to bail them out. And then there's this weird comedic incident where they are forced to have a therapy meeting, a buddy-buddy partner therapy meeting in the police precinct. The scene didn't really make a lot of sense and it wasn't as funny as I think the writers thought it would be. I'm really hoping that we see the last of the therapist, even though I still think she could be a Hydra agent. Basically, in one of these things, you need to assume everyone's a Hydra agent. Um, anyway, the episode then completes eventually with our characters deciding to pull a Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling. And they decide to go get advice and get, pluck information out of Baron Zemo, who is in a Supermax prison. This is going to be awesome. I love this idea. It's possible that they might end up breaking him out or getting him released in order to do their investigation. And obviously, Baron Zemo is not someone you want to release from prison. I absolutely adored this episode. Guys, let me know what you thought down in the comments. Now, before I sign off, I want to talk about all the comic book references because there are a boatload in this episode. Our comic book reference area will also serve as pred predictions as this information might be spoilers because it might reveal future plots. We're going to start with Carly Morgenthau, the apparent leader of the Flag Smashers. Now, she is the gender-bent version of Flag Smasher himself from the comic books, who is, the, who is a super soldier enemy of Captain America. Now, I still believe that it is on the table that it is possible that she is related to Bucky Barnes, possibly his grand niece. Now, this is only thinly veiled. Not a lot of evidence to that exists. But then again, we don't know much about her, but I believe this could still be on the table. As for Falcon, it is possible that his buddy Torres, that's right, that's the military personnel who's been helping him track the Flag Smashers, will eventually inherit Sam's wings and dub himself Red Wing, as it happened in the comics after Sam himself became Captain America. And finally, and most importantly, I believe something truly tragic and horrible will happen to U.S. Agent. And him and Battlestar will take up Super Soldier Serum, the highly addictive and lethal version that the Power Broker seems to have given the Flag Smashers, so that they can even out the score. Revenge will be on U.S. Agent's mind, and he will go on a murderous killing spree, leaving him both a criminal and unworthy of the mantle of Captain America. Now, there have been rumors that in the future there's going to be the Thunderbolts. After all, um, both the second Black, Black Widow and Taskmaster, who are going to appear in the Black Widow film, are also famous members of the Thunderbolts. It, U.S. Agent is also one, and it's possible that after he's disgraced, he'll be headed over to join that team. That might be actually why Yelena Belova is going to guest star in this show. So, let me know about all your theories. What did you think of this episode? Am I giving it too much praise? Or is this a heap of garbage? I don't know, maybe I have blinders on, but I am loving this series and I cannot wait for the next episode. Now, I want you guys to like, share, subscribe, spread the word, and remember to keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis for more MCU reviews, shenanigans, and all sorts of fun and games. Till next time, ciao, for now.